there's something in the air, something behind that sunset. Six months after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps stopped the advance of the Japanese in the Pacific Theater and destroyed Japan's frontline carrier strength during the Battle of Midway. The Japanese had taken significant damage during the Battle of Coral Sea 30 days prior. However, they still decided to seize Midway Island and certain bases in the Aleutian Islands from the Americans. Admiral Yamamoto sent the bulk of the Japanese fleet, including four heavy carriers. Their end goal was to take the islands and then, in the inevitable counterattack by the U.S., take out the U.S. carriers that had survived the attack on Pearl Harbor. U.S. intelligence played a large role in the success of the Americans during the battle. They had broken the Japanese code and knew their intentions from the beginning of May. So Fleet Admiral Chester Nimitz mustered three carrier strike groups 350 miles northeast of Midway Island and waited to intercept the Japanese. Despite being outnumbered, the U.S. had the strategic edge based on their knowledge of the Japanese plans and their land-based forces, including 115 aircraft able to launch from Midway. The battle began on June 3, 1942, when U.S. bombers from Midway Island struck ineffectively at the Japanese invading force about 220 miles southwest of the U.S. fleet. Early the next morning, Japanese planes from the strike force attacked and bombed Midway heavily, while the Japanese carriers escaped damage from the U.S. land-based planes. As the morning progressed, however, the Japanese carriers were soon overwhelmed by the logistics of simultaneously sending a second wave of bombers to finish off the midway runways, zigzagging to avoid the bombs of the attacking U.S. aircraft, and trying to launch more planes to sink the now sighted U.S. naval forces. A wave of U.S. torpedo bombers was almost completely destroyed during their attack on the Japanese carriers at 9.20 a.m. But at about 10.30 a.m., 36 carrier-launched U.S. dive bombers caught the Japanese carriers while their decks were cluttered with armed aircraft and fuel. The U.S. planes quickly sank three of the heavy Japanese carriers and one heavy cruiser. In the late afternoon, U.S. planes disabled the fourth heavier carrier, which was scuttled the next morning, but its aircraft had badly damaged the U.S. carrier Yorktown. On June 6th, a Japanese submarine fatally torpedoed the Yorktown and an escorting American destroyer. That day, a Japanese heavy cruiser was sunk. The Japanese, however, appalled by the loss of their carriers, had already begun a general retreat on the night of June 4th without attempting to land on Midway. At the end of the battle, American losses included 147 aircraft, two ships, and more than 300 sailors. The Japanese losses were four fleet carriers, 322 aircraft and over 5,000 sailors. The Japanese also lost the heavy cruiser Mikuma. Historical analysts often point to the Japanese aircraft losses at Midway as the primary destroyer of the Imperial Navy's air arm. But in fact, about two-thirds of the air crews survived. More devastating was the loss of the trained mechanics and aircraft ground crews who went down with the ships. Some historians see Midway as the turning point in the Pacific theater of war after which the Americans rode straight to Tokyo. Others view it as the cusp of war, which swung towards the Allies in the Guadalcanal campaign. Either way, Midway ranks as a truly decisive battle in World War II. Yes, this really happened.